Hey everyone, welcome back to Rob's Funk and Junk Podcast, episode 19. 19. 19, 19. Um, yeah, how are you all doing out there? What's uh, what's going on? Um, how is your day? How's your morning? How's your evening? Um, are you listening? Where do you listen to this? Who listens to this sort of driving to work in the morning or... Um, when you're working out or walking the dogs. I tend to listen to my podcast when I'm walking the dogs. Um, or uh, I'm in the car driving back from a gig or to a gig. Um, but yeah, that's when I'm listening to them. Or I put one on when I'm going to sleep at night. Because I can't sleep without hearing someone else's voice. Because <laughs> I'm mad. Um, I don't know if that's healthy or not. But I, yeah. I just get straight to sleep. I've probably said this before. I'm repeating myself. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all well out there. Uh, thank you for... Uh, I had some nice messages um, about the last podcast. I think some people thought I was... Uh, last episode, some people thought I was losing my mind. Um, not, you know, doing a podcast at half past three in the morning or four in the morning or whatever it was, whenever it was. But... Um, yeah, uh, I had, uh, yeah, sorry if anyone, uh, I think some people thought I was quite upset or disturbed, um, but I'm fine, I'm absolutely fine, um, yeah, everything's alright, I just, uh, yeah, I, I, the the, uh, the algorithm thing, the um, thing does bother me a little bit, but I've, uh, yeah, it just is what it is, the world we're living in at the moment, but um I did have a few messages in about that. Um, yeah, it's it's been an interesting two weeks. Uh, just getting on with work. I feel like I'm just uh, explaining what I've been up to at the moment, you know, uh, work-wise. But um, there are a few things happening. Uh, I've just uh, booked a masterclass over in the south of France, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Um, I'm going over to do a master class for PRS in the south of France um, on the 4th of March so I'll be doing that and I've just been writing I've been writing quite a lot of music um, of all kinds of things my own my own stuff really uh, some instrumental guitar music that's kind of similar to some of my other material but I've also been working on some songs songs which I've had lying around for a while. So I've just been doing that and really enjoying it, you know, getting into it and uh, just going with whatever I feel like doing. You know, it's been good, but I will be releasing some stuff soon. Uh, I just need to get around to finishing it and not, you know, it's quite difficult to do when you have other work coming in, other sessions and gigs, um, to get yourself in the brain space. I think I'd love to do, I mean... I'd love to, I was talking to a, a friend of mine the other day about it, as, you know, about just going away for a week, booking a week away in some remote spot that you can just go and, and be on your own um, without any distractions, you know, and uh, no internet, no phone, nothing. But I suppose at this time of life, I can't live without a phone, really. I need, you know, I need to, I've got a family to think about and uh, kids and uh you know, I always have to have my phone near me um, just to know that everyone's okay all the time. Probably. <laughs> That's probably not healthy either. Um, but yeah, what else has been happening? Uh, me and uh, me, uh, my other half, Ray, we signed up, or she signed me up to a uh, personal trainer. So we started that on Saturday and we had our first actual session last night. So... My legs feel like jelly and uh, parts of my body are aching that I didn't know existed. I feel like I've uh, j just had uh, been used at a party at, uh, in a prison cell block. My body is feeling very, very knackered. And man, I struggled last night. I enjoyed it. I feel really good today, but I really struggled. I'm so unfit. You know, just doing things like the slam balls and all that stuff where, you, you know, you're picking up the sort of heavy ball, heavy medicine ball thing and slamming it down on the ground. I was so out of breath. And um, 
yeah but that's the idea is to get in shape and uh, get out of the regular habits of what I'm doing at the moment health wise um, but you didn't come here to listen to me talking about health stuff um, uh, yeah but yeah, you know, I, I definitely needed doing because there are bits of my body that are much larger than they should be but I will be I'll be transformed in a month in a couple of weeks actually I've already lost some weight since the weekend so that's good um just regulating what I'm eating um which is quite I've got this app you know the guy recommended we get this oh shit I'll just kick the bin <laughs> kick the bin didn't kick the bucket kick the the, the uh the dustbin um uh, yeah, we got this My Fitness Pal app, so it's really useful for tracking your food intake throughout the day. And um, the way my brain works, I quite like stuff like that, where I can kind of monitor and uh, and input data. I uh, yeah, I, I'm quite diligent at it. I drive Ray up the wall because when we're eating a meal, I'm sitting there tapping away on my phone, inputting the the uh, the food but it's so clever man it's incredible you scan the food and it tells you everything all of the nutrients of the food um but it's uh i'm sure you're i'm sure people are out there already doing it but um i'm finding it very very valuable and useful to see exactly what i'm putting into my body um yeah i sort of did a, a google research the other day about exercising over 50 and uh uh, when you get to past the age of 50, and it all seems to be, oh man, it was slightly depressing, but it, it all seems to be exercises um, about, one second, hang on. Fucking sales calls. Oh man, I hate that when it comes up as a mobile number, you think it, it's uh, something else, but it's a sales call. Um, yeah, what was I saying? I can't remember now. Uh, something about the, the 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 fitness app thing and uh, logging all of the sort of food types and uh, nutrients and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, I'm doing that, getting really into it. Um, I'll be half the man I used to be, hopefully, and uh, in fighting fit shape for this summer's tours. Um, and uh, it's another thing that stopped me doing and stopped us both doing is sinking half a bottle of wine each a night. So. That's quite nice. Um, waking up feeling good. It's just habit, I guess. Um, something that's uh, stuck with us since the pandemic. Um, but as we know, the pandemic is way, way behind in the rearview mirror now. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's all good doing that. Uh, another thing, uh, stop the press. Um, Paul and I... Paul Turner and I are, uh, we've actually just booked in our first um, music uh, workshop camps that we're doing together. We've been, we meant to do this years ago. Um, we had sort of, uh, we put this little business together called Boom and Twang. Um, and we did a few videos a long, long time ago. And then <clears throat> other things just took us off. But we decided to uh, rekindle the idea and uh, do joint guitar and bass workshops um, and uh, just little weekend retreats, basically. So that's the first one we've got. We, we booked the first one in for um, November this year. So I'll be releasing info about that on my Instagram and we'll have a Facebook page up. But um, um, I'm just going to check the dates, actually, because we literally signed off on it the other day. It is for um, the first weekend we're doing is from the 10th of November through to the 12th of November. Um, but yeah, drop me a line at robsfunkandjunk at gmail.com if anyone's interested and I'll get some details out to you. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a fun weekend and, um, you know, lots of music. And the idea being that we do a couple of, um, you know, Paul and I would work separately in in different rooms um, with, I'd, I'd have guitar players and Paul would have bass players. And then on the final day, we would be doing ensemble playing. So bass players and guitar players would be working together 
um, and playing together and uh, then we will be hopefully inviting along well we'll definitely be inviting along a drummer for the afternoon so we can do some sort of group ensemble playing together um, and just work on things like that so yeah if you're interested drop me a line and I can fill you in with some details um, someone did actually I'm going to go to my emails here I got a an email from Michael Miss Gamble um, where are you from Michael I don't know where you're from looks like you might be in Australia I'm not sure uh, it says hey Rob enjoying your podcast and the night early morning rants <laughs> yeah I'm a ranting fool uh, honest and insightful well thank you very much um, always some pearls of wisdom and humble humour keep up the good work yeah I think uh, yeah I try to keep it light but I do go off on the odd rant sometimes um, but you know that's who I am I'm a moaning git sometimes um, I was hoping though that you and Paul are still thinking about that guitar and bass retreat in Thailand sometime this year we definitely are um, we're going to look at how this goes. We're going to sort of release the dates officially soon for our Boom and Twang workshop. And then we are in talks with a venue over in Thailand um, to do the same. So hopefully if there's anyone over that side of the world, over the, that side of the planet, um, we can accommodate and uh, make some you know, do some good sort of, make some good music over there and do some good uh, sort of guitar weekends, well, guitar weeks, guitar and bass weeks. I'm sure it'll be a week-long thing. Uh, I might get to one of your Spanish guitar retreats one of these days, but as with all the long hauls from the Land of Oz comes much bigger plans. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, but I'm still doing those. I've got the elite music camps uh, that I've got this year as well, in uh, which are great. And this is this will be different to doing the elite music camps. Um, I really enjoy doing those over in Spain. They're great. I've got um, two booked in. When am I booked in for those? Hang on. Flying around in my calendar. Uh, when have I got those? So the first one is, yeah, I'm in Spain from the yeah I've got my first week runs from the 30th um, of April through to the 6th of May and then my second camp runs from the 4th of June through to the 10th of June so yeah um, but the first camp is sold out and they're great fun they're great you know it, it's it's really good um, when you've got a lot of guitar players there, everyone's got things in common that they want to talk about and and, um, and everyone sort of picks up the ideas from each other. Um, and it doesn't matter what level you're at, you know, it, everyone gets something from these camps. And that's what Paul and I are intending to do with ours as well, sort of do it over a weekend, a Friday um, to a Sunday. So... Uh, um, and uh, with the added thing that we get to play together and people get to sort of get up and play with guitar players and bass players and uh, sort of just working on the things that Paul and I do as part of our jobs, you know, playing in ensembles and, and uh, working on things like Pocket and coming up with parts and just guitar concepts. And there's it's so much fun because we all get to hang out and spend a lot of time with each other and just talking guitars and uh, generally sort of immersing ourselves in in all things guitar and bass. So it's going to be fun. So if anyone's interested, yeah, drop me a line at robsfunkandjunk at gmail.com. Um, what else is happening? Yeah, the, day, the, uh, the calendar, the work calendar is filling in uh, this year. It's quite busy, actually. We've got, I've got quite a lot of gigs coming in. Um, and there's another one just there. Please excuse me. One second. Yes, sorry about that. That's really rude of me, actually. I shouldn't answer calls during my podcast, but uh, these days I have to because when work comes in, work comes in, and I have to take the work as it comes in. But um, yeah, that was a, my colleague, um, Richard Adlam, and um, he's a, a very close friend of mine, and that was another session coming in, so... Um, 
it was quite interesting last night actually because when I was in the gym there were about three tracks on in the gym that I played on that I didn't even know I was like I know this one that's me um and they were sort of all dance based tracks but yeah there was three of them on that came on and I was like okay that's that's where these are played um and uh yeah it's a little smile to myself as I was uh as the veins in my neck were popping out and uh, my legs were feeling like jelly. Um, so what else is happening? Uh, I had a, another email that came in from OE, um, Oscar, who actually I did a session for, I think. Yes, I did. Did played on a couple of tracks of yours, didn't I, Oscar, I think, which I really enjoyed. Uh, said, hi, Rob, just listened to your episode on Instagram following and how to keep up with the algorithm fuck the algorithm <laughs> i had a few messages about that um anyway uh for new unknown bands it's super hard to break through especially now that small to mid-sized venues are few and far between no one books new bands anymore uh there's no way to tour and build a reputation for uh, hang on, build a reputation for in a new city to build a following. Okay. Um, yeah, he's writing in a different language, I'm assuming, because this English is not his first language. Uh, uh, I really believe that the best way is for artists to collaborate and share your fan base with each other. Yeah, that's a good point. Together we are strong, and together the best of us will break through the social media brick wall that spotlights backing tracks and latex <laughs> bikinis. <laughs> Man, when I finish my gym, I'm going to be wearing a latex bikini. No, I'm really not. That's uh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. This is no plug for what I've written in my previous email. However, the offer still stands. Oh, right. Oh, yes. Actually, yeah, I should look at that. Um, I hope you have a great spring and that you're getting better sleep. Thank you, Oscar. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, just because this is the way... It doesn't mean it's always the way. Things can change. I mean, I've heard about these. Uh, I have been speaking about it a lot. And, you know, I have heard about these companies that, you know, they're, they're approaching approaching new artists. And they're saying, oh, we can get your music on the Spotify playlists. Potentially. If you pay us a thousand pounds we can use our contacts to get your music on Spotify playlists. Now, I don't know. That just seems like a false economy to me. I don't know. If anyone knows any different, please tell me. Um, but, yeah, it just seems like there's gatekeepers in the way of uh, people who position themselves in the way of... Uh, yeah, they're just like the new record company, basically. You send us some money, you pay us, and we will pass your music through to whoever, to a, a playlist planning department, um, which will get you on playlists on Spotify. Um, oh, man, just seems, yeah, it just seems wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> You can hear my tone drop whenever um, whenever I get uh, talking about this, my, my, um, my mood drops. But just because it's the way now, it doesn't mean it's always going to be the way. And, you know, record companies have been doing this to people for years anyway, where they've been screwing, pe screwing over people, um, not necessarily the major artists, you know, the cash cows, but... You know, up and coming bands and artists, um, it's always been the same struggle. So, yeah, I just think, you know, if there are people out there that are sort of innovative and, and forward thinking to think of new ways to do it, I'd, I, I'd love to come up with a way, a plan of how to do it and get your music out there and and, and get it across to people. But I think there's, it's because it's become so easy to release music now and, and produce music, so many people are doing it, and it's just flooded, you know. It's completely flooded. 
Um, not with particularly great music. Um, excuse that noise in the background. I've got a washing machine on in the next room and it gurgles in this room, in my studio for some reason. Um, yeah, there's not particularly... Oh man, listen, shut up, Rob. Moaning, 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 moaning. I don't mean to moan, I'm sorry. Don't mean to moan. Um, I'm going to read another email out here from my good friend David Campbell. Uh, this actually was titled Fuck the Algorithm. Um, Hi Rob, hope you're well. I was up early this morning, not as early as you, and was listening to the new episode. I just wanted to say that I 100% agree with your thoughts on the algorithm. I find it really disheartening that a handful of people and some code decide who gets to be seen and who doesn't. I'm sure a lot of very talented people feel like failures because they're not producing the right content and getting views. It's a shame. Uh, in the art world, there is a lot of controversy over AI-generated art. For example, where you type in, create a picture of Rob Harris in the style of Van Gogh, and the computer produces it for you. I imagine this will become a problem with music too. Computer, make me a four-minute song like the style of Jamiroquai. It's horrible to think that humans might start being removed from the creative process. Maybe albums in the future will have a made by actual people, people sticker on them. Anyway, rant over. Have a great weekend. Yeah, I mean, I think that already exists. AI already exists. Um, yeah, it's it's already there for music. I think it is. Uh, you know, I heard a story about a friend of mine who was um, with some friend with you know going around to see some friends of his for dinner, and they started talking about their son. And they were saying, oh, my son, you know, he's a musician now. And my colleague was like, I won't say who it was, but he was like, really? Okay, what is he? He said, oh, well, he's releasing his own music. He's done, he's, he's made this music. And to be honest, I, and that this is his parents saying, oh, I didn't even realise he could play music, but the stuff he's producing sounds incredible. You know, it sounds, you know, I didn't even know he could play an instrument. And I think what he'd done is he'd gone on to Splice, um, and put a track together using downloading loops off Splice. And uh, Splice is a really great resource. Um, I use it myself. Um, you, you have a subscription to it, and lots of creators, musician creators like myself, I, I, don't, I haven't done it, but they supply libraries of loops. So, you know, if I was doing it, I'd, I'd send in like 40 guitar loops of me playing in certain keys and certain tempos. And when you are putting something together, you you know, you you have a little idea. Hopefully it starts with an idea and uh, you pull in the loop, put it in your um, DAW, your, your door, find a drum loop that matches it find a bass part that matches it because you can pick the key so say you're in you know you're doing something in b minor you pull down a keyboard part in b minor um fits the key and um you could you know a vocal loop that you can uh, you can use in your track and before you know it you've got a decent sounding track you just mix the levels you know and i'm sure you can edit these things to make them sound slightly different to the the loops you've downloaded but before you know it you've got a tune a, a track a piece of music together without having had to play a note um uh i do believe there are f quite well known tracks out there that have been put together purely using splice um and that's the way it is you know i think i, I don't Please forgive me if I'm wrong, if anyone out there is involved, but I did hear that Dua Lipa had a song um, a tr where the track was made purely out of splice loops and sounds. Um, I did see a thing where there was a massive vocal hook on a Justin Bieber song that was purely, yeah, it was just a loop. And because this, because you pay your, as a music producer, maker, you pay your subscription the person who made the loop gets paid 
an amount of money for every time that loop is used, which is good. Um, but they don't get a royalty on the loop if it becomes, say, say Justin Bieber released the song, which he did, and it becomes a hit and it uses a hook taken from a splice loop. The, the, the creator of that loop doesn't get paid a royalty um, because you've already, you've already done that. You, you know, you, you've, uh, you get paid for the download. Um, so as a subscriber, I, I get like, you know, something like, 350 credits a month where I can download up to 350 sounds if I want to um, I don't use it but when I'm when I'm making music if, I, if there's a certain thing I'm after like a little drum sound or a or a, a keyboard wash because I, I don't play keyboards a lot I don't have a bank of keyboards in my studio I can download some pretty cool sounds to um, to play something with I don't tend to use loops. I don't. Um, I don't download loops. I tend to make a, you know, download a sound, a synth sound, and use it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the start of it, you know. And and uh, I know now. I mean, there's a bit of software for mastering that um, people are using. I'm using it myself as well. I don't mean for mastering for release, but. Um, Whenever I'm sort of working on a track and I take it out of the house to sort of listen in the car or listen, you know, just just sort of carry on working on it, I tend to start a track and then get it to a certain point, print an MP3 of it, put it on my phone, excuse my washing machine. <laughs> oh, man, noisy house today. Um, yeah, I do a little print of it, take it out and listen to it sort of so I can think about what it needs and what I'm going to do with it and how I'm going to arrange it. But I do sort of a little tiny little mastering tweak on it. And what that involves is um, it's a piece of software called Ozone. Um, I'm on Ozone 9, I believe. And you put that in your master bus on your DAW. And you basically tell it the sort of parameters you want it to be so I, I do sort of modern and mild medium mastering so it's not completely slammed um, and it asks you to play the material and it kind of does a little mastering job for you not the same as obviously having a trained person a mastering engineer um, to do it but what that means is that you know a lot of people are going to be doing that now and and uh there's there's some online companies called e you know one of them i've used before called e mastered where you can get really decent sounding masters um which are done by ai i'm assuming it's not someone sat at the other end mastering your track it's an ai master um which is of course sadly crucifying the um the mastering engineers that you know have spent years training their ears and uh de refining their art to do quality mastering um yeah just how it is it's just how it is that there's no there's without moaning there's no value put on what um, musicians and and engineers are doing nowadays um i know mix engineers tend to still do okay if you're a name mix engineer, I know that they can still, um, they still get paid quite a good amount of money to do their mastering. But yeah, um, not ranting. You know, this is just, I guess, information for anyone who doesn't know um, how this stuff works. But I always believe, you know, computers can create art and they can do really good things. And, you know, I'm using a computer right now to uh do this isn't uh, i guess a podcast is not really art but um just a ranting 50 year old, year old man in his studio <laughs> um but um yeah we use computers every day we're using them on our phones you know it's uh, we've all got them all the time and we rely on them a lot i guess to live our everyday lives and uh yeah, I suppose it's just how much what the what the uh, the percentage of time we use on them we use them for. Um, yeah, but you'll never replace a good lyric. You'll never replace the feeling of a human being ever. 
you just can't. It just doesn't feel the same. Um, I'm sure it feels good, but I'm just more into, uh, as I said a long time ago, and I didn't create the phrase, I'm sure, I'm sure um, other people said it before me, but music sounded a lot better when, when people made it, or I think the phrase is, music was a lot better when ugly people made it, were allowed to make it. <laughs> you know, you just can't, you just can't, um, you can't compare. That doesn't mean that there's no validity in the music of, uh, you know, computer music. I think that's great as well, but I think there'll always be space for both. And it just is what people choose to do, I think, what people choose to listen to. Um, you know, there's some amazing new artists coming out. Uh, that's my, that's Ray just coming in with the dogs. The dog rush, the mad rush of the dogs. Hang on, you can hear her coming in. <laughs> Water time. Um, yeah, there's some, you know, like Madison Cunningham. Uh, I've been recently listening to Ethan Grusker, who uh, he did an album called On Guard a couple of years ago, and that's just an absolute joy to to listen to. And, you know, I think, yeah, there's people playing. Hang on a minute, I'm just going to close my door. One second, hang on. Stepping away from my computer. I'm just going to close this door, darling. Hi. I'm just closing the door because I'm Hi. doing my podcast. Uh, um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, there's... Yeah, Ethan Grusker, if you haven't heard of him, he's involved in the... Uh, I think the studio is Sound City... You know, I, I I don't know if you've seen the film Sound City, but that studio, I believe now, is owned by... Um, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ray's out there talking to the dogs. I believe that studio is now owned by um, a guy called Tony Berg and also the amazing Blake Mills. Um, so I think I think Ethan Gruska is part of that sort of team. I think he made his album at Sound City, and also I think like things like the Pino Palladino album were, were made there. Uh, I think Phoebe Bridges' album was made there, and yes, yeah, some just amazing playing, but also great songs. Well, start in the order of how it should be: um, great songs, amazing playing, but then also the the kind of soundscaping they're doing is just incredible. Whatever that I think they're just using real instruments to just create new new textures and tones and stuff. So yeah, I I'm really excited by that stuff. So uh, if you haven't heard them, go and check them out. Um, Blake Mills, you know, guitar playing is all over that stuff, and it is just incredible. Um, yeah, I'm his biggest fan, <laughs> and uh, he's super cool. And there's no solos. There's no you know not a solo in sight. Um, but you know, it's it is that sort of rubber bridge. I know Blake Blake is playing a lot of fretless guitar at the moment. It sounds like um, I think he's got a weird Telecaster that's fretless. Um, so yeah, those kind of things really inspire me. I love the sounds. Um, yeah, and that and that Ethan Grusker album. Um, I was telling my mate Matt Pryor about it the other day, and we were sort of uh, perving like audio perving over the record um and uh, it was mixed by Chad Blake who is a mix engineer genius and uh the this record just sounds incredible does it sound like I like that record I think it does I, I really enjoyed it but um yeah so I have what is it now it is 34 minutes I've prattled on more than enough now um apologies for any ranting uh, maybe that's just me at the moment. <laughs> I will speak to you uh, hopefully next week. I will hopefully be back next week. And please um, remember, actually, before I go, um, if anyone wants to leave me a review on the Apple uh, Podcast website, I don't know whether you can do it, um, not the Apple Podcast website, the Apple Podcast app, or wherever you get your reviews, wherever you leave your reviews, if you can leave me a review and a rating, I do think that that pushes the uh, the podcast out to more people. Um, 
I don't know. The algorithm likes it. <laughs> and <laughs> God, what a hypocrite I am. Actually, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I'm doing it. Because they said that's what you have to do, is is uh, get people to leave your reviews. Because the algorithm likes it. You know what? If you want to leave a review, please do. If you don't, don't. It's fine. Fuck the algorithm. Again. <laughs> I think I'm going to start saying that a lot more. Um, should I say fuck the algorithm or screw the algorithm? What's nicest? What's what's more palatable to your ears? Um, yeah, I kind of mean it. I think, well, I do mean it. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Um, but yes, uh, thanks for listening. Um, thanks for putting up with my ranting and uh, my uh, warblings. I should play a bit more guitar. I might, I might sort of uh, play a few, a few tunes um, on my next podcast if I can figure out how to play music from my DAW whilst I'm doing the podcast. I wonder if I can do that through Zoom. I don't know. Um, but once again, if you've got any questions, drop me a line at robsfunkandjunk at gmail dot com. And uh, hopefully you have a lovely week and behave yourselves out there and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Take care all. Bye.